Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things tech and finance and in this video, I'm going to be going over the very basics of what logging is in Python. I'm also going to be incorporating logging features inside of a productionalized Pythonic code base. So let's get to it. So why should we even use logging in the first place? Well, the first thing is that once you actually push your code into a production format, you're not going to have a console to look at your output where your potential errors are located. You typically have to refer to an error log. So instead of having a localized output return value within your console, which you're trying to figure out where your bugs are located, you can then actually have a universal bug tracker of where your the specific code base that is in production uh, is actually running and it has all the outputs related to that particular code base. You can try and figure out uh, where the breadcrumbs are located when you are trying to figure out where your particular bug is located. And anyone in, on your team can actually just go into the error log or the logs file and figure out what may have gone wrong. And this is my example on what a Jupyter Notebook style-ish related to logging parameters and features are. Uh, I'll make sure I post this in my GitHub and the link is in the description. So you can just pretty much just check out these links I just posted over here. Uh, but yeah, these links just detail additional information on what some of these levels represent, uh, trace, debug, info, warn, error, fatal, and you know what type of levels are associated with which type of errors or what type of values that you want to take a look further into. You can also check out the logging API. And it's really rich with lots of information. And I'm not going to be covering everything here. I'll be covering the most basic um, features and variables that are associated with this particular library. It's actually a, like a really wonderful library. So I do highly recommend it, that you check it out. Uh, so yeah, so these are the basic logging levels. I have debug, info, warning, error, and critical. And note that the value associated with each of these levels are 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50, and so on and so forth. So. I'll be going a little bit more into depth uh, as to what these logging levels mean. But over here, um, you make sure you install the logging uh, package, do like a pip install, and then I'll be incorporating this particular library for this function only related to the Jupyter Notebook because I'm only going to be running on one kernel and I have to constantly re-update my kernel if I want to re-update my log output. So that's the only reason why I'm using this, but in a productionalized format, I will not be using this. I'll be giving you an example as to why I'll be using that. So over here, the most basic uh, config that I can think of, uh, these are probably the most important parameters that you want to check out. So uh, file name, this is just the name of your logs file. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have a dot log. Uh, but that is going to be where my output is going to be outputted to. My level, in this case, is login.info right here. So what this means is that anything with a value greater than or equal to 20, any of those values would be put into the stream instead uh, inside of log file.log. So info, warning, error, critical, any of these levels will be incorporated inside of that particular file. Debug, if there is a value, if there's a like a statement with a debug value that uh, just somehow appears, it's not going to be incorporated in this log file. You might have to create a different log to actually handle all of your debugs. So that's what the level parameter will do for you. So this is also a really cool format, uh, the date format and just format in general. So there are a lot of built-in functions um, that are associated with the logging parameters. Uh, you can look at ask time. You know, I just went down the list and just pretty much just picked which of these formats I really want to be incorporated inside my logs file. So you can go ahead and check out which ones exist and which ones are most interested uh, in your particular use case. So let's exit that out. So yeah, I just use the ASCII time. I'm getting my path name, path name, line number, level name, and the message associated with that. And this is my date format. And this is by default, your file mode. I'm just appending. Uh, and if you want to overwrite, you just put a W or a W star or W plus, one of those things. Uh, and also do make sure if you are using uh, Jupyter Notebook, you want to make sure you are reloading your logging. Uh, in order to make sure that all of your parameter or all of your file output is actually being recorded because it's just one kernel. 
All right, so I already ran this, and so let's run this. So logging info, this is my first message. So let's see what output that looks like. So let's open this. This is what that looks like. So the very first uh, line is this. So uh, Python, IPython, so it's a Python notebook, input dash three. This is the third cell. And I'm not really sure what that is. It might be some key ID, but this is the line number, second line. Oops second line and then info this is the level at which that particular value was printed and then of course this is my first message and over here is my timestamp so as you can see it follows the format that i have initiated inside of here the formatting um it just pretty much just follows that so it's a really nice format to use and as you can see you can just pretty much just keep on incorporating the log info um or log debug error you name it so let's run the next one let's run this and then let's reload this file uh reload that and then voila this is what that looks like here all right so if we are in a jupyter notebook we, we want to rewrite so do make sure to reload the logging because uh, as I said earlier, this is just going to be related to a one kernel. So you essentially have to rerun uh, the logging instance in order to uh, re-enter the values inside of the logging uh, so that uh, it, it just like uh, it works in the back end of where you have multiple instances with multiple loggings. So yeah, make sure to relog that or reload that. Uh, same analysis, you know, use the exact same things, but in here, uh, we want to overwrite the file. So let's just rerun this and then let's pull up the log file again. And voila, your uh, log file has already been uh, overwritten and you can just work with this. So just change it by the W. So uh, I'll be doing an example on what the um, the values and the levels are associated with. So it's pretty much just running the exact same format, reload the logging file, you know, pretty much copy and paste everything. But one thing I want to point out is the logging info here. So I want to, let's say I want to pretty much try to categorize all of these texts that are associated with uh, this particular output. So over here, since I'm right on a pen mode, uh, the first message was not overwritten, but this, in this case over here, uh, notice that the debug line was not incorporated into my logs file. And this is because of course the levels, anything greater than or equal to that specific threshold, uh, it will incorporate that, but nothing less than. So that is how that logging works. So as you can imagine, you can incorporate many of these logging strategies into different logs files and then you can just you know fish out which uh, specific details you really want to focus and hone in on okay so yeah so you can also change the level output that you want with the file uh, that's pretty much the exact same thing you don't need to uh, look at that but yeah it's just a different level so if you wanted to reload everything rerun everything we are going to also be wrote rewrote everything so if we were to reopen the file we rewrote everything and we are only incorporating the error level in uh, critical, which is greater than the error level. So let's see this in a productionalized format um, and let's look at it step by step on how to incorporate this with a object oriented schema. Okay, so this is going to be my example on productionalizing logger files with a object oriented main file. So I'm going to have three files I'm going to be working with in this demonstration. So the first one is going to be the main.py file. This is just going to be executing everything. This is where the brains are going to happen. I'm going to be loading a class from the logger.py file. And the logger.py file is reading uh, the associated structure associated with the log structure that I want it to be in. And this is where the logging config YAML file will exist. All right, so let's begin with the main PI file. First things first, you wanna load in your necessary packages. So I'll just be loading and logging. Uh, let's create a main function over here. It's not gonna be doing anything in particular right now. Uh, let's have a main function over here as well so just to execute it so this is going to be the structure on what we are going to be doing over here so let's go ahead and configure the yaml instance over here and conveniently i already wrote that over here so high level overview 
uh, for a line by line. So version, the version one, you can increment this however many times you want to update your config file, push that to GitHub, and you have a nice noticeable trail on your configuration setup. Uh, disable existing loggers because I don't have anything currently, so um, I could be enabling the existing loggers. And then this is going to be the formatters. Um, I, this is just pretty much a lift and shift from the Jupyter Notebook on this specific formatting over here. Got the time, got the path name, line number, level name, and the message that I want to be associated with this particular line formatting. So a handler is essentially trying to um, pretty much address a very specific component of a stream output. And if that stream output were to occur, how will it handle that particular stream output? So I have two different sub uh, subcomponents of the handler handler at the console and I have uh, which which is the class uh, logging stream handler and I have the rotating file handler so really simple um, more often than not uh, this is pretty much gonna be like the base class it sends a logging output to stream such as standard output to a file uh, other than that uh, this is the particular file that I will be trying to incorporate all of my streams into. The rotating file handler class is a really neat class in that it can take into consideration of a buffer overflow. If there are more bytes than there are allocated, then it will incorporate a like a, somewhat of a backup copy. So if there's overflow happening, it'll incorporate like a one, two, three, four, all the way up to backup count however many you initialize. In this case, I did 20. Um, and it'll just incorporate like one over here, logs.log, two, three, four, et cetera, all under, under your uh, specific directory name. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much that. And then the root over here, uh, that's just the, in, the, uh, the, the root, the logger hierarchy in that when it's, it's executing, that's where the root at the very top level is going to be called and everything's going to be passed through that particular uh, root logger. So this is going to be the format I'm going to be using. Uh, we want to import the logging config YAML into the logger.py file. So within the logger.py file, we are going to be creating a class. And within this class, we are going to be importing this class to the main PI file. So let's set up this class. So we want to import the login config. Uh, we also want to import YAML and we want um, the operating system as well. So let's create this class. So class sets up logging, logging, and we want to initialize, initialize init in it initialize that we want self as well and we want to address the file path structure uh, and i already have that over here so we we'll just address that so this is essentially um, setting the default configuration path to the logging config yaml over here so notice that i'm going to be importing the logger pi file into the main file and the file this particular feature within Python is relative, is the relative address to whatever is executing the main executable. In this case, it's main.py. So the address of this at its root, and then just configure the config, uh, and then logging config YAML, which exists right here. So let's put that over here and go back over here. So that is my setup. So I'm automatically defaulting to that particular file path. Okay, so let's uh, create a function, set up logging function over here. So then we want to have a default level as logging dot, then I put it as an info over here. Okay, cool. So once we have this set up, we want to set the path. This is going to be self dot default config. That is a path. So if this path exists, which is going to be if path dot exists, the uh, path name. If it exists, then this is where we're going to be initializing the logging uh, value inside of the main.py or whichever module calls this particular module. So in this case, you just want to open it up. So let's open the path. We want to read, uh, read it and read it as a file config um, and then just to be a safe load over here. Let's read the file contents f.read. Okay. Cool. And then let's have this login config. We want to convert all the contents within the YAML, um, the YAML 
set up as a dictionary, we did them as a dictionary, and we want to safe load this. So let's capture the warnings, capture warnings, and set that to true. So if it is not in that path, if the uh, login config YAML was not set up, then we just want to stick with the basics. So we just have a basic config. So in the event that our configuration file was not set up, then we are just going to be sticking with the most basic of basic. So that should run over here. Now, once we have that set up, we want to import this. So I'll be like from utils.logger import setup logging over here. So notice that the logger pi file exists in the utils file. And we're just going to be importing that over here. Uh, so everything is set up. So let's now initialize our logger. Uh, initialize our logger or init logger. And in order to do that, we just call our function setup logging, um, which is actually a class, but we just want to now call the function that we just created over here. Uh, oops. Uh, over there and voila you already set up your logger so let's do an example uh, let's do logging.info hello world or hello viewers I should say uh, please make sure to like subscribe and comment um, and then let's have like another one of these lines over here um, let's see I guess like if you made it to this far <laughs> much love <laughs> voila and then everything is set up we have our let's see oh it's just error okay cool that's fine so let's go ahead and run this i uh, have a trusty anaconda prompt directory i think we are good to go let's just run in that pie hopefully everything is up to par okay everything ran notice that logs.log was executed and voila, we have our logs file. So notice that we can always incorporate this particular setup logging into whatever directory that we have, and we can always create a new logging um, system altogether. We just have to make sure we incorporate that with the handler system here and just incorporate additional file names within that file subclass. So if you made it this far, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe. And if you have any questions, make sure you uh, comment down below. I'll make sure I put the code on GitHub and I guess I'll see you there. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. I hope to see you in my next video.